Hey guys, it's Amaria here and in this video I decided to cover one of the frequently asked questions that I see pop up in the comments from time to time and that is, is it okay or is it in any way bad to eat the same meals every single day? And I'm sure you wondered this as well at some point and again, just to remind you guys, if you have any questions or anything like that, you can definitely leave those in the comments below because I read every single comment and it usually inspires me to make a video. So on topic, is it okay to eat the same meals every single day? Well, if you're, if you're kind of expecting a yes or no answer to this question, I mean, of course, it depends. It's not black and white. It's not just a simple yes and no. It depends on many different factors. So I wanted to go into a little bit of psychology and physiology as well. And if we look at, let's say, just purely observation and purely from my own experience and from I see and just looking at logical reasoning, if you look at our evolution as human beings, we didn't have a lot of variety in the past, right? If you look at 50,000 years ago, you didn't have like a Walmart or a Tesco or something like that where you can just buy foods from five different continents and you would have all this a variety available to you, right? So foods were pretty a bland and variety was very little, but let's say 50, even, I mean, even a thousand years ago, people were, even a hundred years ago, people were just eating the same things. And a lot of fitness marketing, a lot of gurus out there would try to scare you and say, well, you're going to develop these intolerances, you're going to develop these allergies if you eat eggs every day and things like that, which is a lot of nonsense, right? And a lot of uh, scare tactics out there, you know, here's my program of like rotating foods and to keep you healthy and optimal, you know. Uh, we've kind of evolved to eat the same foods. And if you look at, let's say, the blue zones, if you're not familiar with the term blue zones, it's actually the regions in the world where people live the longest, and not just live the longest, but they're the most functional in their old age. So if you go to, let's say, Okinawa, which is one of the blue zones, you might meet someone who is like 95 or 100 years old, and they're just carrying their groceries. They're doing some kind of uh, gardening, or they're doing some kind of... Uh, agriculture or work while if you're in let's say United States or if you go to UK or Canada and uh, you meet up people there you know you see someone is a 65 or 70 years old in a supermarket they're carrying like five different uh, sticks to help them walk and they're on 15 different types of medication they can barely take care of themselves right and they usually have people help them right and it, the blue zones are a really good example where we can look at purely observational. This is, of course, not, not a research study where you can see, okay, it's a peer-reviewed journal or something like that. Uh, no, not a causation style of um, research, but observationally looking at them, they eat pretty much the same foods, right? They eat some kind of fish, they, whatever they can catch in their own kind of environment. They have a variety, a little bit in the types of meat they eat. They eat a lot of sweet potatoes, which is pretty much what they eat every single day. And um, if you read the book, actually, Blue Zones, I mean, there's this one person from Okinawa that just ate sweet potatoes every single day for like 35 years, you know? And they didn't develop an intolerance to sweet potatoes. So they have some fermented soy products specifically toward the Japan region but the point is that these people are eating the same foods every single day so if you actually have some kind of favorite breakfast that you're eating maybe it's like eggs and oats or as in general people typically go for oats and some kind of yogurt or something like that I mean it's completely fine to eat that food every single day if that's your kind of staple breakfast and you don't really have to think about it which brings me to the second idea here is that why um, less variety might be a better option if let's say if you're just starting out with nutrition is that you will eliminate a lot of that decision fatigue. I know a lot of us, I mean, we love variety, right? And I love variety as well. But if you think about it, every single decision you have to make will take a little bit of that energy away from you, right? So it's going to generate a little bit of that fatigue. So if you have to wake up in the morning and figure out what you're going to eat, um, that might deplete you from making a better decision, right? I mean, if you look at, let's say, some famous figures like Steve Jobs, Mark Zuckerberg, um, Obama, or people like that, I mean, they're usually wearing the same clothes, right? It's kind of the same pattern. They want to eliminate the decision fatigue by um, reducing the number of these meaningless decisions. I'm not saying food is meaningless, but you can certainly help yourself by having a kind of a routine, at least for, let's say, a breakfast or, let's say, a lunch, where you know exactly what you're going to eat. It's kind of a routine. It is your favorite thing as well. You pick something that you really like, and you can repeat that every single day, right? So in that sense, a lack of variety, I mean, or just having a routine can be very, very helpful from a behavioral standpoint. It makes it a lot easier to prepare food. You always know that it's going to taste good. It, it makes you feel better. It gives you all the, like, the protein. It gives you the carbohydrate. It gives you the fat. Whatever your um, macronutrient composition of that is. And you just simply stick to that. But on the other hand, what this can backfire. Let's say if you're following some kind of clean eating bodybuilder style of that. What they used to do back in the 90s and something I used to 
to follow as well. Let's say you have five meals a day for five meals and every single meal is just chicken, broccoli and rice. And it's chicken, broccoli and rice. Every single day, seven days of the week, week after week, every single month for months and months. This certainly is going to an extreme where you might suffer from certain micronutrient deficiencies. So this is taking the whole I don't need variety to an extreme and at that point it can actually backfire. So there is a middle ground, there is a balance to strike between how much variety is too much and I would say that having a, a decent scope of nutrition is looking at having a variety of vegetables, variety of fruits, rotating your meats a little bit, right, so include some type of red meat throughout the week if you're eating meat. If you're not eating meat, make sure to have a variety of different plant protein sources. Include some dairy, and types of dairy depending on what you're tolerant. You can include milk or cheese or kefir or Greek yogurt or quark or whatever it is. But make sure to have some sort of variety. But you can also make that variety a routine, right? So if you're looking to kind of create your own quote unquote perfect day, which is something that I've I kind of do myself right now is I, I kind of have my staple foods that I'm going to eat, let's say 70% of my daily intake will just repeat itself every single day. And then I will have that 30% that's kind of a bit of variety, right? And I will have a couple of meals out per week, let's say one or two, and that will also add some extra variety. But most of it is a routine and that just simply helps me stay grounded and also stay more focused on the things that really matter more to me than currently than trying to, I don't know, figure out some perfect recipe for, for I don't know, some kind of dessert that I need to prepare for two and a half hours. I don't really have time for that. And I'm assuming that you don't have time as well. And if you're following some kind of flexible dieting as well or tracking your macros, I mean, that's really helpful because you can include all these variety of foods, but at the same time, it's very draining to track all the different types of foods and it can take a lot of energy. And I don't really recommend to having so much variety that it really overwhelms you because I know it feels like, oh, I want a variety. I want to have all these types of foods, but when people actually try to do that and if you don't have a lot of experience, even if you have a lot of experience, you're gonna find yourself very overwhelmed because you have so many options that your brain will just simply be paralyzed. And I've been there so many times, I try to do like, oh, I'm gonna switch up foods every single day and it's, I just get paralyzed and then I just go, okay, let me just go for my default choice and I'm gonna try to figure out something for dinner or just some kind of little snack that I haven't had the day before, right? So. Uh, variety is a good thing, but it can also be a bad thing. So it really depends on the context. And if this video um, shed a little bit of light on that for you, let me know in the comments below. As I said, uh, we haven't really evolved to have massive variety, you know, eating foods from like three, four different continents in the same meal. I mean, this is the first time in history this is actually possible. So don't beat yourself up too much if you're kind of repeating the same meals. But at the same time, if the only vegetable that you're eating every single day is like a cucumber and you're eating cucumbers seven uh, days of the week for three meals, I mean, that's probably not a good idea. So you wanna have some variety there for the sake of micronutrition deficiencies, as well as rotate a little bit of the food Again, we're coming at mindfulness about balance and it's really about not falling into any of those extremes, which I know is a little bit hard because we often like to think in extremes and this is one of those things that can extremes can really backfire. So hope you guys enjoyed a quick video topic, quick answer here. Uh, as I said, make sure to put those comments, uh, put those questions in the comments if you're looking to find your answer because I'm looking there for an inspiration for videos and I often, as you guys can see, I mean, I reply to every single comment but I also look into the comments for ideas. So make sure to put your thoughts in the comments below. Aside from that, make sure to hit that subscribe button below to support the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.